DSC is for configuration management. I got two sessions during this week. This is on how to make a pull server for your infrastructure where you will put your configurations and your resources. The next session that I'm doing is how to package your configurations and your resources. These sessions have nothing to do with writing configurations and your resources. That was yesterday. Now, do you want the good news or the bad news? Bad news. Oh, pessimist. Um, bad news is this. If you don't know anything about DSC, this is the deep end of the pool. Sorry. Now, you want the good news? Yes. Good news is this. You want the code from yesterday? Yes. Yes. I'm going to give you the code from yesterday. Which includes the code that I'm using today and the code that I'm using later in the week and all the code that we did yesterday, which can show you how to do DSE. So, I have no idea. It's just a dummy it down your resolution problem. Is what it, is. it worked all day yesterday. Same res. Yeah, exact same res. I, I, well, I tell you what, don't worry about it because I think when I go like this, it stays lit. Okay. So, I just had to show him a couple <laughs> of didn't. slides. Oh, it didn't? Yeah, it didn't. Yeah, I don't know what else to do. If I dump my resolution down now, Where, it's going to explode all my VMs. Is it? Yeah. Okay. We just have to deal with it. Um, first of all, guys, when this thing decides to come back on, look, 10 years of PowerShell, yeah? <laughs> you can see some of these people walking around here. There's going to be, you know, Microsoft blue badges everywhere. So say hi and talk to people. All right, look, look fast for when it blinks. What's going to come up is there's the, the link to the code. It's GitHub at PowerShell.org. There it is. Get it quick. Use your camera. Also, you want Stephen Morosky's reading list on DevOps. It's an excellent reading list. Okay, you don't look impressed. All right, let's talk about pool servers. Here's what we want to do. We want to have a configuration that we want to be able to send out to other nodes that are going to automatically configure our boxes for us. We do not want to push this to them because that means I have to manage that. I don't want to manage anything. I want to sit at home in my underwear and drink coffee or whatever, and I want it managing itself. So we want to bring up a server that we can put our configs on that all of our nodes that are using DSC can go to to grab the config for them and automatically do it themselves. Are you with me so far? Yes. Good. Give me feedback just like that so I know that you're alive and well. And don't worry about the flickering screen. We'll get through it all. So does that kind of make sense? I want to have this, this pull server? Now, there's three kinds of pull servers that you're allowed to have. Three kinds. I only got three more slides, guys, and then we'll... So you can have an SMB pull server. Here's what an SMB pull server is. Hey, you know what? you guys ever build a file server? Yes. you guys ever create a share on a file server? That's an SMB pull server. Oh, come on. That's, that, that, that's, that's all it is. It's a server with a share. So you use, though, the PowerShell command new SMB share to create the share and assign the permissions to it. You can configure the client LCM, which is the local configuration manager, to go to that share for the configs, then delete it and do the right thing. <laughs> come on. Why not? Do not use an SMB pull server. You don't have all the features that you need. There's another type of pull server called an HTTP pull server. This is a web server. Yay. It's an HTTP web server, which means all communications go across the wire like what? Plain text. Plain text. Not good. Here's why not good. You don't want somebody snipping those configs and understanding how you're configuring your boxes. That's not good. So you can configure an HTTP pull server but then delete it and do the right thing. Are you ready for the right thing? You only have one right option. HTTPS. There you go. Oh, man, I love it when you play along. So what this means is, has anybody here ever set up a website with a certificate on it? Awesome. That's all we're going to do. Now, I, the cool part about this is you have some help in making this work. And we're going to go to code here in a minute. I'm going to show you how this sets up. It's not difficult, I'm giving you all the code, so there's no reason why you can't do this at home. Here's what I recommend, and I recommend this all the time when we talk about DSC. I do not develop DSC by pushing it, those configurations, to machines. The reason is, is that I need to see the whole process. If you come to my next session, 
on this. It gets complicated fast. And so I always, even in a lab environment, set up a pull server, an HTTPS pull server, because it's free. And in my lab environment, I go through the whole process of development. So it's always correct. So I'm going to give you how to build this pull server. It's really easy. If the light stays on long enough. Now, when you guys, don't worry. When you guys um, get the code for this, I'll wait for it. It's going to look like this. You're going to download this thing called DSC. Boy, that's really irritating. <laughs> DSC, sorry guys. DSC Precon. And you're going to have all these sections under there of code. The section that we're starting at is section 7. So you got six earlier sections of wonderful code just for you. Okay, don't be so happy about it. Section 7 is the pool server, so I'm going to go in there and I'll show it to you. And here's how I construct everything. You have a demo file. This demo file walks you through the entire process. Ready? Say yes. 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 Wow guys are tough. I'm going to set my directory here. Now here's what I did. I wrote the entire process down for you in a short list so that you can see what the whole process is. And then I demo and create the entire thing for you. So here's what I want you to know. Don't panic about this thing flashing. Just get the concept that I'm trying to convey to you. Because you have the code and I've written it all out for you. Well, are we good so far? Good so far. Good. So relax. Relax. Okay, good. I like that. So one of the first things you're going to need is you are going to need a couple of things right off the bat to make a secure pull server. You're going to need a certificate. Now, this pull server is an internal pull server. You can use your own internal PKI to put an SSL cert on it. I never recommend wildcard certs, but if you must, you must. Um, so you can put an SSL cert on the box that's going to be the pull server. In my case, I'm going to use a box called DC, which is, happens to also be a domain controller. Don't do that in real life. You can do it in the lab. But, um, then we're going to turn it into a pull server. This gets a little bit complicated because it's not you making a website and putting a certificate on it. We need some special services in there. Microsoft has bundled this for us to make life easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a DNS record for the pull server. This DNS record is what I'm going to teach all my nodes how to use, how to get to, to find their configs. I'm going to forget what this is, but it's dsc.company.pri. So I'll just add the DNS record. And here's what I want to show you as soon as he's done with that. We need a DSC resource module off of the gallery. The DSC resource module that we need to get is called, and, and don't write this down because I have it written right here, it's called XPS, Desired State Configuration. This module gives us a couple of capabilities and some documentation that I want to show you. Now, do you want me to give you the truth or the story? The truth. Oh, the story. Because see, the story is a nice, easy, polite thing, and the truth is painful. Okay, truth it is. Blame him. Blame him. So look, let me show you how to find this module. You can find this module, and I've written it out for you, of course. I'll show it to you. Oh, yes, please. Nougat. 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 Come on. Come on. Please, I think we're going to find the module. There it goes. That's awesome. <laughs> no, that's not awesome. There it goes. There. So here's the module. XPS is actually, I want you to notice the version number, 3.9. Um, Friday of last week it was 3.8. Wednesday of last week it was 3.7. I'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, but so they're updating it. But you need this on the pull server and the box you're writing the config to make the pull server. So your author box and your target. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of this right now. No, I can't get rid of that. Oh, this is going to cost me. Oh, it's okay. I'll fix it. So here's where I'm going to do this. I'm going to use install module to install uh, XPS desired state. I need another resource module because the way I like to write my configs. Install it on my author box. 
And then I need to install it on the box that's going to become the poll server. The, re the resources must exist there. So you can see the next command I'm going to run is invoke command on DC to do that exact same thing. Are you with me so far? Yeah. OK. So we'll do that. And here, I want to show you something. One of the best things about DSC resources is Microsoft gives you some documentation to help you learn how to use the resource. So I, what I wanted to show you was, right here, where that module is getting installed, out here, and I have to change this to 3.9, out here underneath examples, there's a sample of how to set up a pull server. This is really nice of them, right? Are you, don't you think that's nice? They give you a sample? Very nice. Okay, you don't seem all excited. Let me show you a sample. We're not going to do it this way, but... So they give you a sample. This is a configuration of how to set up a poll server. And here's a couple of things that we need. First of all, we need to have a special Windows feature called DSC service that has to be installed first. When that's installed, now we can start to set up our pool server. And I want to show you some of the configuration settings here. These are things that we have to tell the pool server how to configure its website. I want you to do me a favor and look at the endpoint name is going to be a website name. What I want you to do is look at port. Port 88. This is the port that the website is going to run on. Now I want a secured website. So what port should this be? 443 does it have to be 443? No, see, SSL works on any port. Why do we usually set it for 443, though? Because users don't know how to type in colon for, you know, whatever, you, and there's no way to communicate, so we, we make it easy because the browser makes it easiest for us. Here's what I don't like to do. I don't like to set poll servers up on 443. And there's a reason for this. I can teach the LCMs, the nodes, how to get to the poll server by giving them the port number. But I might, on this poll server, want to set up something else on this poll server, like a self-service portal or PowerShell Web Access, things that I need users to access that are on 443. And here's why, I, and some people would go, you know, do I have any exchange guys in here? Let me set up a CAS box. Are you allowed to put any other websites on the CAS box? No, sir. You don't call me sir. Uh, <laughs> uh, no! I want to tell you something. I want you to think about this. Configurations that you put on this pool server are little tiny text files. Even if you have a thousand or six thousand configurations, they're little tiny text files. Do you know what a web server dishes out really well? Little tiny text files. Little tiny text files. You know how well it dishes it out? The millions of people can get little tiny text files from a web server. So I want you to, I want you, this web server you're building is never going to be doing any real work. Because your nodes are going to ask for a text file that's going to go. One of these can handle everything you've got. Everything. So I want you to just kind of think about that for a second because he's not working hard. So I like to put other things, management things, on him to use up that resource a little bit more. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. So if you take a look up here, I'm going to leave it at port 8080. Here's how we're telling it, though, to be a secured website. We need to give it this information, the certificate thumbprint of the certificate. I'm going to show you how I get that to fill that in. Now, I want to point out a couple of other things. Module path and configuration path. This is the physical location on the pull server where you will put your configs and your DSC resource modules. You can change this. I do not recommend it. In other words, why are you changing it? If, if you ain't got a really good reason, don't do it. Um, I also want to point something else out here. I skipped over the physical path to where the website files reside. And when this comes back up, it's missing something. <clears throat> this is wrong. The documentation is wrong. And I don't know if you'll stay lit long enough, but the documentation is wrong. Does anybody find that funny? No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I find it typical. 
<laughs> it says INET Pub, but it should say INET Pub www is the location where the physical files are. Don't worry about it. I'm going to give you a config that's correct. The state is going to be started. Other than that, let me show you my config and we're going to run it and make a poll server. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah. All right. I'm not going to show you the simple one. I'm going to give you the advanced one. Why? Because I think you're advanced. You get both, but it's the advanced one. Um, I'm kind of, uh, I'm a web guy, so I'm real anal about web servers. And web servers are under constant freaking attack. Constant attack. So here's what I do is I want to configure my pull server, which is a web server, with the most minimal components possible. I also want something that nobody else seems to like to set up. My boxes are all core. There's occasionally when a web server needs to be managed from INET, the, the INET management tools, you know, like a developer or something like that. You have to turn on and enable remote management on web servers. On core, you can't do it because you can only do it through the graphical. I need you to think that through. You can't turn on remote management because it requires the graphical on the box to turn it on. Well, why can't I turn it on remotely with the graphical? Because it's not turned on. <laughs> well, how am I going to turn it on? I wrote you the PowerShell code in DSC format that does it. I figured it out. So I'm going to show you how to turn on remote, remote management. Nobody's pull server configs has this in it. So here's what happens. You can't manage the damn thing after you get it set up. Isn't that stupid? So do you want me to give you the good code or the bad code? Okay, I like that. Uh, I hope for good code. So here's what we do. <clears throat> this is called an, uh, the uh, config data. I separate my configuration data from my actual configuration. So what I am allowed to do here is I can put in all of those things as properties right here at the top if I want to change them. If I want to have multiple poll servers, which we'll talk about in a minute, I can just have multiple hash tables here with different computer names in it. Now what I'm setting up is roles. I got a web role and then a pull server role. So here's all my configuration data. Take a look at this. This is how I get the certificate thumbprint. I invoke command to the box that has the certificate. <laughs> get child item to the store. I find the certificate with a where clause if it stays lit and then I grab the thumbprint. This is a great piece of code, man. You want this code. This is a great piece of code. Um, so down here, here's how this works. This is the actual configuration itself. And I want you to take a look at the line. I import the DSC resources that I need, but I want you to look at the line all nodes where role equals web. That's how you separate your configs for the different roles that you want. This makes it real convenient because once I've written this correctly, I never want to touch this code here again. The only code, the only thing I ever want to touch with are values in the config data at the top. So I made this much better for everybody. And here's the other thing I did. And I'm not going to make you try to watch the blinky thing. I'm, I'll tell you about it and you'll, you'll see it here. When you install a web server, you install a Windows feature web-server, it installs a limited set. As a matter of fact, just enough stuff so that you can have an HTML page. No code will run, all that kind of thing. Microsoft thought that would be a brilliant idea, and they're absolutely correct. So what I do is I do that, but you still need some components for the pull server, so I install those. But here's the thing. That basic set that it installed, there are things in there I don't want on my pull server. And I want to reduce the attack service as much as possible. So not only do I have Windows feature resources that are adding in individual components, I'm also removing the stuff I don't want, that the default installed. This gives me the tightest web server with the least amount of attack surface possible. They don't do this if you use their sample documentation. They just go boom and it just barfs out. I'm anal about this because I know it will be attacked. And also this web role is what I use for all my web servers. It's always the most minimum cut down for them. And just the application components like ASP, you know, .NET 4 or 5, that it needs to run the applications. So what I have here, as this thing is blinking on and off, is a list of each one of those. So it's a detailed list. It'll come back. Don't worry. You're not missing anything. So pretty long list, but really cool. Let me get to the cool part. 
GUI, remote management, as soon as it comes back up. See the light? Oh, no, of course you don't, because it's not up long enough. I'll just give you. So what I did is I figured out, I did this actually a long time ago with just regular PowerShell scripting. I figured out how to enable and configure the remote management piece on IIS without being on the box. You can do it in a script, but I put it in DSC format. So you have to install the window of the web management service. The problem with this is, is once you install the service, you still have to enable remote management and then configure it. Those are done through the registry keys. I figured out the registry keys. Now the registry keys don't exist until you install the management service, but they exist. So you have to make sure you get them in the right sequence. Please flip back on. You can look at the code when you download it. There's the uh, remote management stuff when it flips back on to the registry keys. Or to enable it, get it set up. The other thing is with remote management on IIS, there's a service that has to be started called the WMSVC service. There's a problem. I love this problem. This problem makes me so happy. The service is not started. You guys know how to start a service. You can remotely do a, a start service, WMSVC. But here's the problem. The service is set to manual. So when the box reboots, guess what ain't working? The remote management stuff doesn't work. You can't get to it again. I love that. So what I did is I used the service uh, resource to set it to running and configure it for automatic. Yeah? So that way it'll always be there. OK, cool. Well, let's run this. Oh, let me go just show you down here. Here's the pull server. And what I did is I replaced all those properties I did in the config data as variables down here. So I never have to touch this code again. This code is good code. It puts things in the right place, unlike the sample that's out there. So you should, you should, you should applaud that I gave you good code instead of bad code. Because Richard Sidaway gives you bad code. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let me run this. And what will happen here is it will create a uh, MOF, and I'm going to push this to the pull server. Well, why don't you pull it to the pull server? Because I don't have a pull server yet. Um, and I'll show you. I'll let you see this as it runs. I'm going to, um, I'm also going to change the LCM on the pull server. Uh, you don't actually need to see this. This is just because I'm weird. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> but here, let me... Um, I'm going to kick off the configuration, so I'm going to hit this, and it's going to push it out. It's going to run the config. It's only going to take a couple of minutes, but what's going to happen here is I want you to notice what I'm doing right now. What am I doing right now? Talking oh, ass. No. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. <laughs> Nothing. In other words, I'm a big fan of I don't like to work hard, uh, so I'm going to let this thing go. Now, here's the best thing about it. If I need a second pull server, what am I going to do? Run the top and run again. Yeah. I may not even, other than the name, I may not even need to change anything else. Just push it out. If I need 50 pull servers, which you would never need, I could just fire it to 50 machines all at once if I wanted to. This beautiful thing, man. It's beautiful. It's really, uh, except you can't see it, but it's getting to be beautiful. And <clears throat> once this pull server comes up, You'll be in full operation. Now what you need to do is start putting your configs and your resources up. And that's the hard part. And that's my session that I hope the screen stays on the entire time on, I think, Wednesday. But I want to talk about high availability. This pool server, as you'll see, he'll come up. He'll be a working pool server. It'd be nice. <clears throat> is this mission critical? Yes. This pool server is going to hold all of the configurations for all your nodes. Is it mission critical? It might not be, because... Well, that's a way to split in the middle and not have a good point. <laughs> if the pull server's not available, it won't get updates to the config, but it's already got a cache copy of the config on each node. Here's the thing. You're absolutely correct. All the nodes, when they get a config, they copy that config to themselves. They run that configuration. The only time they actually pull anything down from the pull server again is if you made a change up here. So I want you to think about it. If this pull server dies, Everybody's still doing what they're supposed to do. You just can't get any changes out. So is this mission critical? Absolutely not. So how many pull servers do you actually need? One. Yeah, thanks for putting up the right finger on that one. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the, here's the thing. In production, not lab, in production, I don't know how 
my availability for free. So I'm going to set up another pull server and make it highly available. And let me tell you why. It's not for performance. It's not because it's mission critical. It's because of two things. I'm lazy and it's cheap. So since it's cheap, I don't, if one pool server dies, I don't have to care at that moment. I might be out drinking, I might be having fun, and I don't want to care about it. It's so cheap, it's free. Yay! Yay. Anybody here ever set up a load balancer? Yes. Load balancer website, that's all you're doing. So what you do is you bring up another pool server, you put a load balancer. Now, what kind of load balancers can you use? Well, first of all, how many of you have heard of Microsoft Network Load Balancer? How many of you like to use NLB? Well, that's a sorry site. <laughs> NLB doesn't suck. NLB is actually a great load balancer, but it's a later three load balancer, which means the entire NIC has to die before it fails over. When I come to websites, I want, if the app pool dies, I want it to be able to fail over. So I need a layer set of load balancer. I need a big IPF5. Yes. Yes. So I'm going to spend 100 grand on two of those, because you want to load balance the load balancer, <laughs> for a cheap, dirty pull server. That kind of sucks, doesn't it? Now look, if you've got a spare hardware load balancer laying around that you're not using, go ahead and use it. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm thinking, it's kind of overkill. This isn't a commerce site for my customers. This is my internal pull server. So I'm going to give you a free piece of software. How much did I say it cost? Free, free. That works as well as a big IPF file. And here's the deal. I use this in production on commercial websites. I see confused looks. Huh. Okay, here's what I need you to do. Stand up. Stand up. I don't have a lot of time. Come on, come on. You sit all damn day. Get up. Richard Sidaway, of course. He's too much of English gentleman to participate in all of this. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to put your foot up on your chair. I want you to go like this. Hand on over one eye. Oh, come on. Put your hand over one eye. And go, R. 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 All right, fine. I'll sit back down. <laughs> now he doesn't want to forget he can do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all important. R. A R R. Application request is louder. ARR is one of the greatest load balancing products in the history of the world, and you don't even know that it exists. And I'll tell you why. You're going to yell at me, too, when I tell you why it exists and who it exists from. It Microsoft made it. And was that the IIS team that made that? Yes. It was the IIS team that made that. I'm very, yeah, we're not going to talk about that, okay? We're not going to go through that whole scenario because I'll say the wrong thing again. You know what's going to happen. There'll be tweets and it'll be bad. Application request router. Here's how you get it. You go into the iMac Config Manager, you go out to the web platform installer, you search for ARR, you install it. You get a new icon or a new folder in your web management tools, and you drop servers in there, and it'll load balance them. Just like that. You can change the algorithms, all that, if you want to play with that stuff, or you can just drop servers in there, and it'll automatically load balance them, and it's faster than gas, and it works perfectly. I can't believe it was written by Microsoft. No, that's a joke. That's a joke. That is, that is laid out. So a free load balancer that doesn't cost you money, that's the one to go through. So to make this highly available, bring up two pull servers. Easy to do with this config. And then give it a shot. I'm going to show you how to test the pull server, what it looks like. Now, I might need to reboot this because I was removing software in my config. Oh, it worked. OK, fine. Um, when you install R, R, would you install it on one of the pull servers? You put that on a great question. machine? No, great question. I'm glad I, 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 I should have. Uh, so let me answer your question. This is a great question. Where do you put ARR? You treat it like you need a box that you're going to treat like a load balancer. So what you do is you have a separate Windows VM or whatever with IIS on it. That's where you install ARR. That becomes your load balancer. The pull servers are behind that. Those are the things you put into the little folder, their names. And your DNS address points to this guy. Now, some people will get ridiculous like me and go, well, I need to load balance the load balancer. 
do you put in a second ARR box and then use NLB between them? Is the is, is the best way to go. Then it's it's, it's free. It's awesome. It works. Yes. Sir. Your first step when you wrote the you have DNS entry does that change now that you use the ARR box? Yeah, you'll change the IP address to the IP address of the ARR box. You got it. Now, guys, I want to show you this because I'm just proud of this. Um, this is what it looks like when it works. I know it looks like it doesn't work, but that's what it looks like when it works. And if you come to the next session, you'll actually see it work as we do configurations on it and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I just want to show you this, the remote management, because I'm, I'm so happy that, come on, light up long enough on the screen. Wait a minute, you'll, it'll light up, you'll see it, hold on. Hey, I got management. Oh, come on, I got remote management in the web box. And your pull server, that's that endpoint website, pull server on port 8080. Now you will teach the LCMs of the nodes how to get there. And I will show you that in the next session. Yes, sir. It has an 80 binding. If you have a you should be building this on your own new box. So don't build on somebody that's already messed with the ports. What I do is I want to tell you this. In the configuration, what we usually do with web servers is we turn off the default site because we're going to make our own stuff. <coughs> People will say to me, why don't you just delete the default website? That's not good. Sometimes we like to bring that guy back. So I just turn him off. I do not turn off the default website if it's a poll server or if it's an ABCS server. It's a certificate server. Because if it's a certificate server, now you can't get any. <laughs> um, and your poll server, there might be reasons for us to use that default website. Now, I need to give you some good news. Oh, no, I can give you that news in the next session. Uh, that's when it applies. Um, so, let me check the time. Awesome. I know it didn't look like much, but you get all the code to make your own poll server so you can start your own infrastructure. Does that look cool? Yes. Yes. Okay. Come to the other session I'm doing, because now we'll go through how to put all your configs on there and you'll see it all run, because there's some tricky parts to getting all the configs and the resources onto the pull server. Once you have that done, you now have the infrastructure you need for DSC, both for lab and for scalable stuff out there. Now, I do want to point a couple of things out. Right now, if you especially come to the next session or if you were in the session yesterday, Right now, there are a few things that we are, that the team is working on with pool servers. You notice how I said we're at the version of the XPS desired state 3.9, we're at 3.8. That's because they're, they're working on some issues that we might have in situations. If you come to the next session, we have an issue with configuration things that I'll show you a workaround for until that gets fixed. I want you to keep something in mind. When you go back to your office, you should try this and build this. Use my code, whatever, make your own code for this. But follow along what's going on with these version updates on XPS desired state because you might run into something that you don't need to fight because it got fixed. If you come to my next session, you'll see exactly what that is and how it's getting fixed and we'll just move on from there. So just want you to know this is a work in progress, but I use this in customers in their infrastructure. It is a stable, usable pull server. It's a great product. Now, if this pull server does not provide you, and I say this about anything in DSC, if you're working with DSC, we assume you're going to start building your own tooling for a while. Because this is a platform, it's not a whole product. But I have a tendency to say this, if you came to yesterday's, and you'll see him walking around here, Stephen Murawski, he's a chef guy. He's the chef guy, right? The chef guy, wearing an apron, you know, chef hat. Other options are like chef, and puppet, and Ansible, stuff like that. I have a tendency to go to chef. When I work with customers that, we, that cannot build their own tooling today, I'll direct them towards Chef. If I'm working with customers that already have developers and already have IT guys that are PowerShell capable, like you guys are, that can build their own tooling, building the tooling you need is easy. And types of tools. Well, I want to inventory everybody to see what configs they're running and stuff that into a database. That's easy to write. In the future, I can't tell you this for sure because I don't know for sure, but I would assume that probably Microsoft at some point is going to have some more tooling around this. But right now, you can easily write anything that you need. Now, if you were here yesterday, you saw that a lot of that. You saw me writing a lot of tooling. And some of the stuff I give you, I've done some additional tooling about it. 
but this is a really good product to start with. And what we see a lot of people doing, even if they think they're going down the chef path, they're doing the DSC path alongside it. Matter of fact, I'm working with somebody right now that's doing both. You know, I, how many hypervisors do you guys use? Hyper V? Oh, so you only use Hyper V, that's good. So, no. Oh. <laughs> we only use one, we only use Hyper V. Oh. <laughs> yeah, use one. So a lot of companies, you have VMware, you have Hyper V. So some companies are doing multiple configuration management systems, and that's not always a great idea, but if you haven't gotten into DSC, this is the thing to get into. This product rocks. And configuration management is the most important thing. And on Wednesday, I think it is, Michael Graham's going to go through all the DevOps stuff. You want to see that? Marowski's going to talk about DevOps stuff. You want to see that? So ask whatever questions you want to ask in the, the few minutes that we have remaining before you get fed. So I noticed when you um, were setting up the modules on the pull server, the pull server actually went out and got the, got the modules off the internet themselves. Um, and my company, um, IIS servers, unless they're customer facing, yep. cannot be web connected. Absolutely. So what so, you do okay. is you take your workstation, mm -hmm. you bring the modules down, and then you just copy them. So I can just pick the folder off of my workstation and drop it on the folder. I, I work with a lot of government agencies that are in the same way, right? They can't have, their machines can't directly access the internet. So all you need to do is bring down your copy, and you copy it out to the program files modules folder on that pull server. Now, I, I, I don't want you guys thinking you're going to be deploying resources all the time. The whole point of this poll server is going forward with all your nodes, you're going to put all of your resources, custom resources, all that, onto that poll server. Those nodes will then pull them down from the poll server. So the nodes don't need internet access. It's just this initial set you'll need to go out and grab, right? right. And then put them up there yourself. You can just manually copy them. I've got a, a script that does that for a customer, just updates versions and boom, boom, boom. So, because they have that situation. What else? Oh, come on. Do you want to do design state stuff? Do you want to do configuration? Mm -hmm. Did you gloss over the certificate? You just assume it's already on the box? Yeah, in this situation, the certificate's on the box. However, I did give you code to do the, the certificate request from your PKI if you wanted to. Um, if you have ADCS set up, and you have the policy uh, uh, stuff set up on your ADCS. I gave you the code, it's commented out, but you can actually just run code to go request the certificate automatically and put it on the box. A lot of people manage their certificates, though, a different way, so I don't usually automate that for a customer because they have some other piece in place. Their security team does it a different way. The idea is to get a certificate on the box, and then we can pull its thumbprint and go. In your other talk, um, don't you have the ability to, to encrypt the configurations themselves? Are you going to cover that in your um, We talk? actually did that yesterday, and it was about credentials. So I missed it. You missed it. <laughs> However, you got the code for it. You download it. And if you want to ask me questions about it offline, I'm happy to talk to you about it. Cool. Um, the, the code takes you through, don't do this because here's your result. Plain text password. Don't do this, like they say on the internet, because here's your plain text password. Then it says, here's how you encrypt it. You're never going to find this on the internet because they changed how to do it. They added in a document encryption type. You have to make a new certificate. You have to add the new EKE for the, the, the document encryption type. If you don't do exactly what I have in there, it's never going to work. But I wrote it out all for you. So and I'm happy to talk to you about it and take you through that kind of thing. I mean, it's changed in WMF5 than, than what we had in WMF4. So if you see older stuff, I did a lot of older stuff on credentials and all that kind of stuff. It just doesn't work the same way. The process is the same, but you've got to make a change to the certificate. I'll try. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we go all the credential stuff. So. All right, guys. Well, you know, I'll hang here and add, answer questions. But if, you know, if you want to go, you know, potty pee or lunch or something like that, please feel free. But I'll, I'll stand here for 15 minutes and chit chat. So you're officially done. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about the screen. I don't Push know. Push the button again. Push the button. Thank you. You are very you helpful. Me for a I know. That's I. I